Everybody get up on your feet See the light in everybody you meet Everybody get up on your feet See the light in everybody you meet Let us be reminded of who we've come to be We are love, we are one One big family, hey, hey, yeah Am I on? Oh. Hello. Hey. Welcome to the Sacramento Center for Spiritual Living. Elton John here. I just want to welcome you to this All Hallows Eve Sacred Sunday service. I'm told that we are going to be recording this session. Let's see here. Is that correct? Oh, yes, I believe. Oh, yes, there it is. Yes, we are recording this session, and we're going to be putting this jam on to the uh, social media. And if you want to be anonymous, that's fine. You can go ahead and do that. But um, this jam will be on top of the playlist at the website, uh, on YouTube, and, uh, of course, uh, Facebook. Uh, but let me tell you that the best place to find out any information, I'm told, is at saccsl.org. That's where you're going to find the, the events and the classes and the services and uh, the volunteer opportunities. That's how they got me on here, you know. Uh, anyway, thank you to our YouTube audience for uh, watching and for your donations. And Please remember to subscribe, not only to the website, but to YouTube, because that's how we're going to get this jam going even better. Um, now, I just wanted to tell you that there's some big news coming up, and you are going to want to stay tuned to the end of this service to find out what the big news is. And, you know, I'm told that... Um, 
this big news is something that everybody's going to want to hear. And so it's it's kind of a secret until the end. So don't be going off to your jazz concert or your Halloween party or any of that kind of stuff until until you get to hear what's happening on the big news in during the announcement. So now, until then, I want you to help me welcome our wonderful senior minister, leader of the band, and Leader. Leader of the of the the spirits today, our beautiful Reverend Sharon Dunn. Yeah. Good morning. Oh my gosh, Corey, that is ridiculous. That is so. What are you, Miss Corey? That looks like if I'm looking at you, you That's are. That's for my Occupy days. Your Occupy days. Oh my God, that's brilliant. And that the hair just goes right into it like it should be your face, except not. Thank you. <laughs> and good morning, Jim and Jennifer. Jennifer, are you like. It's hard to see, but I'm Dorothy. Dorothy. And is he Oz? No. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's dressed up as James today. Oh, James. <laughs> James. Okay. I think I know. I think I want one. I was that one year. I think oh. I, I was James. It's a popular costume. It's <laughs> you have the ruby red slippers is the question. <laughs> They're too small. So I'm not wearing ah. them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. By the way, I'm looking for shoes, girl shoes, for a size 12 man, if anyone knows where I can find such a thing. Because later on today, we're going to be Sunny and Cher. <laughs> and he's going to be Cher. <laughs> because he said she's towered over Sunny. Yeah. And so we're kind of doing a little twist on that. So if anyone knows of any place to get giant girl shoes. <laughs> Anne, are you a detective? Are you, let me guess, are you ah. Holmes? Oh, you're Ernest, I mean, Sherlock <laughs> Ernest Holmes. <laughs> that is, everyone needs to give you a standing ovation for that. That is pretty darn clever. <laughs> and I'm going to steal that whenever we have convention near Halloween <laughs> <laughs> or an Ernest Holmes contest, <laughs> you would win. Absolutely. And Margie, you look fabulous. May I ask, what are you? You are. Wait, wait, I want to hear. Wait. The microphone's not working. Oh, microphone is not working. Okay. Uh, or she's a meme, a mime. <laughs> I, I think she might be a mime. No, I think we can hear her now. Can you hear me? There you are. Okay. What are you? I am Sacramento CSL. Great opportunities great opportunities that we have and I hold and I give to everybody. Zach CSL. <laughs> and you'll be hearing about them. <laughs> Is that right? Oh my goodness. My goodness. And it's almost a Phantom of the Opera look. And Linda, sister witch, are you the good witch and I'm the not so good witch? Or are you the Am I the good witch and you're the not so good witch? Well, my t-shirt says you can't see it, but it says you say witch like it's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I because I have spiders that you may not be able to see all over my veil, I think I'll go ahead and be the, um, let's see, in Science of Mind, Patricia, what would that be? The, the witch that um, gets stuck in effects. <laughs> The witch but, that, but I will share my room with you. Oh my God. 
Um, so we can, I can ride, ride together, ride, ride or die. <laughs> Lin <laughs> Linda and I ride or die. <laughs> oh my goodness. And then there's Connie scaring us from the land of pumpkins. Oh my goodness. We have another witch. We have sister, witch Carol Marr. Good morning. Where are you, Miss Marr? Let's hear you unmute for a minute. I'm in Carmichael. I'm home. You're home. And uh, it's just so you don't know how good it is to see you. And hopefully you're feeling better than the green that you're wearing in your hat. <laughs> you're not feeling as green as once were. And of course, oh, that's, that's due to prayer, right? Amen to that. Amen, amen, to to, that. amen to that. Yes. And so how are you feeling? Hopefully. Um, I'm feeling great. Yeah, sure. No problem. That I'm is great, fantastic. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. Yes. And good, good morning from Kansas. Are you, do you understand, uh, Kathy, that we do have a Dorothy here in costume <laughs> as, as, as it's Dorothy Cartan. <clears throat> and she is with um, James, which is an authentic costume, very popular in the 80s. Oh, <laughs> um, oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, that's funny. I think we're having a little too, John. Much, too, too much fun here this morning. <laughs> Okay. Oh my God there. And now we have another Kansas person again. Good morning, Diane. I wanted you to note that you're represented by Jennifer Cartan, who has come as Dorothy representing the state of Kansas. So I, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to say that I'm, go, I'm going to say that Kansas is the best represented today <laughs> although although the witches are second Thank best. You. the witches have have uh won second place in the costume contest that we're having that you knew nothing about <laughs> and so the winner is uh the representation for kansas and um <laughs> there's a <laughs> Patrick, I don't know if we're going to have Sunday service this morning because that is ridiculous. I'm sorry. It is, it is, it is my honor and privilege to open our sacred scary i mean sacred <laughs> service this morning if we can keep a straight face and uh i should stop <laughs> i will welcome our practitioner of truth who is who has celebrated her birthday this week if we could make a little noise for her yeah ah! i have a feeling that this I have a feeling that this Sunday service is going to be slightly spirited. But I want to tell you uh, that Reverend Patricia Van Workham is such a love to this community. She is our associate minister, as you all know, but she's also my friend. And that means when I say friend, I say someone who stands by me, regardless of my behavior who co-creates with me, regardless of me wanting to control everything, who is such a brilliant mind, who compliments me in every way, and who I have learned so much from, so that my, actually my life has improved. It has our relationship, because if you think about it, where we lead, they will follow. Our relationship has grown this center and brought the love of the faces that you see right now. This spiritual community that is not only this group, 
but represented by many. And there, if you stay for the announcements, as 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 Ruth, our president, will or Elton John, sorry, <clears throat> Elton John will be uh, giving you information that you have not had before. So you want to stay for the announcements. And if you're listening to this on YouTube, you want to stay till the end so that you can see the announcements because we have a special, a special news bulletin that will make all of you joyously thrilled. So stay for that. Meanwhile, we're going to have the heart and soul of our associate minister bringing us into this sacred, spiritual, full of spirits and spiders morning. Good morning, all, and welcome, welcome on this fabulous, fabulous Halloween day. As the bell, that wonderful Tibetan bowl invokes such a perfect energy, know that there is a perfect energy before and behind all that is seen, before time, before space, before even beyond even Rumi's field, there is a place in mind, the field of infinite possibilities that is the source of all. And it is in that field of consciousness that we all live and move. For it moves in us, it created us out of itself. It is the truth of who we are. And we gather here today to celebrate in love and laughter and joy and enthusiasm, the movement of that spirit in us, in our community. And we are open to the words and the music that are designed as the perfect experience for us to hear what we need to hear, know what we need to know. and stimulate in us that urge to know more, to be more, to grow more, to experience more of the divine self that we truly are. And so I give thanks for all that is going to unfold <clears throat> in the next hour. And so it is. So now for our readings. Our first reading is from the Science of Mind. We must transcend the appearance, even though we admit it as fact. We are not so cold blooded as to say that a person with pain, that there is no such thing as pain. We admit the fact. It is quite different to admit its necessity. Disease accordingly is a fact, but not a truth. And our second is from Mary O'Malley. Opening to life brings you into full engagement with, a, with what is happening rather than keeping you caught in a conversation about life. It means giving up your war with what life is bringing you. And from Alan Watts, one of my all-time favorite philosophers, to the enlightened individual, it appears as a vivid and overwhelming certainty that the universe, precisely as it is at this moment, as a whole and in every one of its parts, is so completely right as to need no explanation or justification beyond what simply is.
And now our opening song from Melissa and Z. Just a child when spirit came to me. Said, Girl, you have things you are meant to do, so lean on me. There have been times when I make it through that's when spirit would turn my head the other way and have me sing to you that if I believe Understanding, closing in, nowhere to go, but where I landed, wait. That's when I heard a voice in me. It filled me up. It said, believe, believe in yourself, what you're here to do. You got no more excuses when you follow what's true for you. I was raised up, I was made new. Now I'm standing here right in front of you to speak, to give you the word that was given to me. Cause nothing can stop you if you believe. Others may say that I am wrong. Ha! What can they know when I know that if I believe? There was a time when I couldn't go on and I, I tripped and fell. Oh, I was down, I full of pain, misunderstanding, closing in, nowhere to go but where I landed. Wait, oh, that's I when I heard that a voice in me. It filled me up. It said, believe, believe in yourself. What you're here to do, you have no more excuses. When you follow the truth, for you I was raised up. I was made new. Now I'm standing 
here, pride and money, and you to speak to give you the word. It was given to me. There's nothing can stop you. If you believe that I was I raised up, I was made you. Now I'm standing here, right in front of you to speak to give you the word. It was given to me. There's nothing can stop you. If you believe to give you the word. If you believe. Oh, yeah. Wow. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Melissa Felipe and my friend, Reverend Z. Wow. Their mission, their ministry, the Oh My God ministry is a blessing to the world. Thank you so much. That was amazing. So good morning, goblins and witches and pumpkins and all that and Elton John's and all of us. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Halloween. Soon to be All Saints Day. Soon to be Dio de las Muertos. There's just a lot going on today. A lot going on today. And not only that, but it's our last Sunday in October, and we have been looking at the theme of going further together. And again, I want you to stay on board until the announcements, because we have gone further together in a way that will be so exciting for our community. So stay, stay tuned for the announcement. An announcement. That's a, an announcement made by a mouse. But it's actually going to be made by Elton John. And I don't know how serious we can be today, actually. Actually, so. <laughs> but that's okay, too, because God is good. And God, a God principle that we might want to work with today is joy. <laughs> because, <laughs> because my God is a good time. My God is a good time. A God time. And so our topic for today, if I can stay on point, which maybe not, is I'll meet you there. And I have loved this topic all week long. Did you know that, Reverend Patricia, when you said, Rumi? Oh, because I thought you were giving a little infomercial on today's talk. But you know what that means is that there's one mind, and that we all have access to it. And that one mind is infinite and very powerful. And guess whose mind that is? My mind your mind. It is a witch's mind. Oh, I mean, it is a spiritual mind, a spirited mind. And so Rumi, who is a poet, an ancient poet, said, out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. May I say it again? I'll tell you why I want to say it again. This actually is my life's direction. What do, what do I mean by that? My life's direction. My life's direction, meaning that every day, in every moment, in every way, I'm looking to meet you in that field. And I'll talk a little bit about that field. But he says, out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing. Now, listen to that. Now, remember, we're our human beings having a spiritual experience. What's the point of life? The point of life is to love more, to use that one mind as much as we possibly can before we leave this world. And to live in that field. To live together in that field, even if we're not actually in a field, we have that field in mind. So he says, out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing. And so in the field itself, there's no wrong, there's no right, there's no personality, there's no like, ew, I don't like your culture. I don't like your 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 country of origin i don't like your language i don't like that you're different from me there's none of that in this field and i know this field personally i've been there i've been there when i was so distraught so in conflict with another human being that i couldn't function 
I literally couldn't function. Have you ever had a relationship with somebody that you just get such a mad on that, that, that you can't even, you, you're not your best or you don't feel your best. Have you ever had a relationship like that? You know, or, or how about, you, you know, someone scares you to death by something they say to you and you believe them and, and you get, you get so far from that field. Have you been there? So this field, I promise you, if you learn how to go to that field, when you're in that place of, well, when you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, when you're in that place that, that the psalm is written by in scripture, when you're in that place where you, you, you are having a human experience and it's enveloping you. Have you ever had that? Have you ever had that feeling like, I can't? And then Melissa and Z, don't they sing about, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, if I believe, all I have to do is believe. And so it's really important for us to get an, a mental equivalent of this field, isn't it? And I have literally, I have literally found that field in the spiritual practice of visioning. I have literally been in conflict with a spiritual sister I don't like her. She's a bully. She's a, I can't, I can't function. I lose myself in this relationship. I need to stay far away from her. And then we did the spiritual practice of visioning, which is similar to going into a meditation, letting go of everything that we know, going deep into this, into the field beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing and praying together there, coming out of that field and having a completely different relationship with that person. Because I fell in love with that person in that field. How did I fall in love? Well, I fell flat on my face in the field that was always there. I fell flat. I tripped on my own self and there she was in that field. And there was no personality. There was nothing ever that happened between us. And when I came out of that field with her, she was the same. She behaved in the same way. Our relationship changed. I didn't, I wasn't scared anymore of her because I knew who she was. So we meet ourselves there. Have you ever thought of that? I'm going to meet myself there and just like, just before I get to that field, maybe dump this backpack I have that's so heavy and so burdensome. It, it's just, oh my gosh, have you ever carried a backpack that is so heavy? You can't, you can't breathe. You can't enjoy life. You can't do anything. You're carrying this heavy load of stuff. You just leave it right before the field. Are, are you with me? Has, do we know this field that Rumi writes about? So our topic today is I'll meet you there. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Can you imagine if, if you had a conflict with somebody and you just said, I'll meet you there. Where's my magic wand? I'll meet you there. And then Glenda, the good witch, just sprinkles this happy dust. And her witch's outfit turns all beautiful and white. And she's got this gigantic bustle. And everything is wonderful with beautiful colors. I'm not kidding you here. We can do all of that in mind, can't we? There is no magic to science of mind. This is science. This is science. What we give attention to expands. What we observe, we collapse into form. So we're looking at this idea of I'll meet you there, and I'm going to talk about three things quickly because today we've been slightly distracted by silliness. And those three things are my help through the valley and to the field. It's, it's a march, isn't it? It's a march forward. And the spiritual principle I'm using today, which is what is a principle is that which is true for all. Our declaration of principles was written by Ernest Holmes, Dr. Reverend Dr. Ernest Holmes, who is the founder and teacher of our movement of our of science of mind. And he wrote a declaration of principles very much like in other faiths, kind of a defining who we are, isn't it? 
what we believe. And what we believe is who we are, isn't it? <laughs> it is who we become, certainly. So today we're working with, we believe in our own soul, our own spirit, and our own destiny. For we understand the life of all is God. Isn't that beautiful? And, you know, funny today, we are really focused on our soul, aren't we? And, and our spirit, as we celebrate Halloween, as we celebrate Dio de las Muertos, as we celebrate All Saints Day, and all of these holidays are connected in history, as you know. And it's, they're thousands of years old. And what happened when, when we had some of these rituals and traditions that seemed a little pagan and ungodly when the Christians came upon the scene, they had to translate it into something that we could all, all do together. And so it's kind of grown into what we can do together in, in uh, celebrating Halloween. However, Halloween and Dio de las Muertos is not at all the same. And I think we can get confused by it because we get to be goblins and pumpkins and, and all of those fantastic things that we are in costume. But the context of Halloween is scary and monsters and fun, fun with spirited parties and 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 trick-or-treating and candy. And Dio de las Muertos is observed for two days, starting at midnight, November 1st, and going into, um, and going into November 2nd. And I, I have a couple of things I want to say about that. Um, it, is, it, it is not, um, it, it is not to, to, to celebrate the, the, the idea of goblins and, and, and spirits, but rather it has a significant um, sacred and wonderful celebration for families in Mexico. And it is on the Day of the Dead, Dio de las Muertos, it is believed that the border between the spirit world and the real world dissolve. And the souls of the dead awaken and return to the living to feast, drink, and play music with their loved ones. And the family members treat the deceased as honored guests. And in their celebration, they leave food, favorite foods, and offerings at grave sites. And Halloween decorations are similar in that we, we dress up as ghosts and goblins, but in Dio de las Muertos, they paint their faces as calaveras, skulls. So skulls are really kind of the predominant costuming, if you will. They're really dressing as skeletons. I love it so much, don't you, that that it gives an opportunity for the community, for, this, for the families to do something other than darkness around death. It's almost like a celebration that everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing it, doing it. We're all going to be transitioning into the next experience to our greatest yet to be. Only I, I believe that in our culture, in the Western culture, we're kind of afraid of it. We can be. We're afraid to talk about it. We're afraid to, to, to celebrate it, certainly. We don't celebrate it, do we? We, in fact, mourn and are sad. And that kind of seems to be the only thing we do with death, is that we're afraid of suffering. Of course, who wouldn't be? Who wants to do that? But then we also have a, a missing and a mournfulness around those who go before us. But we never get to that place of celebration. And, you know, I always equate dying a little bit to giving birth to the new life. 
you know, and I, I love the whole idea of mid midwifing, if you will, being the midwives of our next expression, but we don't do that. You know, it's not appropriate to get excited about somebody who's having a send off. We don't have parties around those that are being sent off into the next expression of life. But in Dio de los Muertos, they bring that home every year with celebrations. I mean, who wouldn't want to be celebrated and brought food and, 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 and constantly being honored and, and loved? Isn't that a wonderful idea? So there is a big difference between Halloween and Dio de los Muertos. And I I'm actually writing a book about it because I just love the idea of the whole sacredness of the whole transition. You know, we use the word transition, meaning that we're, it's a transition in, in, in the human experience to be born, to get married, to, to die, to, to move on to the next expression. And I think can you imagine Dio de los Muertos in the context of COVID-19? How many more souls are being brought home for feasting today, invited back into the threshold, into the homes of their loved ones? And I... I am filled with the spirit of Dio de los Muertos. I am filled with the spirit of Halloween, knowing that it's going to be a fun day for, for me. And we hold multiple truths simultaneously, don't we? And, you know, my cousin, I just found out my cousin died of COVID. My Hawaiian cousin Jessica Keala, peace and rest for her soul. But I'm going to, I'm going to think in terms of feasting today in her honor. And that would be a luau, wouldn't it? That would be a luau. It would be a, it would be a celebration of feasting of her favorite foods poi and and so many other things that I'm going to hold her in my heart today as I hope all of you do with your loved ones and and celebrate this transition that all of us are going to experience I know some of us are definitely right in the thick of inviting their loved ones back home. Am I right, Ruth? Cookie? There's a lot of us. So back to our, back to our topic of, I'll meet you there. And back to our idea of my help. And I think, our, I think if I'm right, Ruth, we're going to hear a song when I'm finished here that is one of my favorite songs. I hope you stay to listen to it because when we put our Sunday service on YouTube and, and we're using in our Sunday service copyrighted materials, we have to take them out as we post our, our videos of, as we archive our videos that we celebrate each Sunday. So you may not hear it if you're listening later, but if you are listening later, be sure to be sure to go to the, the YouTube and listen to the song, My Help. It is one of my absolute favorites. And what does that mean? My help cometh from the Lord. What that means is, <laughs> I can't do this by myself. I cannot do this life. I don't know who can do this life without a spiritual life without connecting the human life with the spiritual life. It's my anchor. It, it, what, it's what grounds me. My help cometh from spirit itself. And where is spirit? Not some 
Oh, I was just told this week, some guy in the sky on a red couch. I was like, hmm, interesting. I never knew he sat on a red couch. Anyone, anyone's first God sat on a couch, a red couch? Okay, just checking. Mine was more of a throne, I think. Um, and then just mo mo mostly just kind of white robes in the clouds, kind of sitting on clouds, maybe. Uh, but, but what I've learned from this teaching is that my help cometh from within me. And what does that mean? My help cometh from my spiritual practice. My help cometh from me building a spiritual muscle that will greet every effect, appearance, situation, condition, and circumstance that comes into my life by me attracting it to me. So I'm not a victim. Oh my God, look at that. That happened. Why did that happen? What did I do wrong? Why did this diagnosis happen? Why have I attracted this? So it's very complicated for us to be the victim consciousness, that one kingdom of consciousness that says, it's my fault. I did this. I brought it on. And remember that we have a race consciousness, a global consciousness that we have to add to what is happening in effects in the world. I know that sounds complicated, but what is going on in the world is not just Sharon. <laughs> it is it is generations and generations and our ancestors and our conditioning. And there's lots going on that we are creative souls and have created is, uh, to, to experience the human condition. And in Buddhism, we know that Buddhas, in Buddhism, Buddhism helps us to know that there is suffering. And in the Eightfold Path, we learn that there is a cessation to suffering, that we don't deny that there's some stuff going on. We don't deny that, wow, look what's happening in my life right now. But we know what we can do about it. And what we can do about it is we can use my help. And my help comes from spirit that created me in its likeness. And when I forget, what do I do? I come to my community. I come to our spiritual community. And it reminds me, if if I forget, Patricia will say, sister, sister minister, why don't we try on this idea? You know who else does it? My kid. <laughs> hey, mom, why don't you reframe that? I do have some regrets in my life that I have taught my children the science of mind because they hold it against me. That's a joke. Um, again, a very spirited Sunday morning. So the next thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at through the valley and keep keep reminding me we're, we're going through the valley and we're going to the field. Okay. <laughs> Please remind me, but what does it mean? The valley, <laughs> the valley is it. That's where I feel what's going on. That's where I don't do a spiritual bypass. What does that mean? What is a spiritual bypass? Spiritual bypass is actually my favorite thing. <laughs> it's like, oh, Rhett, I can't think about that now. I'll think about that tomorrow. That's where I say, oh, that's not happening. That can't be happening. It's where I face and feel what is. What do I mean by that? The facts 
Only the facts, sir. Only the facts. The facts could be anything. A diagnosis, a prognosis, losing a job, um, dying of COVID, jealousy, envy, those deadly sins <laughs> that I love so much. Oh, I love my seven deadly sins. <laughs> and it's when I am brave enough to feel what is, brave enough to feel the facts. But in that valley, in the shadow of death, I don't set up camp there. Haven't we said that many times? We go through the valley, but we don't park. Now, a spiritual bypass would be when you see the sign that says you're now entering the valley of the shadow of death, five mile an hour, please. And you take a left instead, that's a spiritual bypass. But what we're going to do here is going to go straight in, like we're going straight in full, full force. And we're going to feel what that feels like, aren't we? But we're going to know as spiritual translators, we're going to know that beyond that field, beyond that field, beyond the shadow of death, beyond that valley is another field. And that's our destiny. That is where we're going. That's what we have our GPS set to, our God positioning system. We got that plugged in so we don't stop. But what I'm getting right now is I'm getting an image of the valley of the shadow of death because I'm in a witch's costume and there's branches, right? And there's scared and there's spiders and there's and there's like and there's like bats. I don't know where I'm going with that, but all of a sudden I was just in the valley of the shadow of death and it was like, wow. It's no joke, really but I'm really brave. I like to think that I'm a brave soul with a very courageous spirit and that I'm willing to face what is. I'm also willing to hear what's happening for you. And sometimes when I hear what's happening for you, I get scared. I get, I get scared and I have to, I have to do some, some time in the field, don't I? The field of where there's no wrongdoing. I have to do some time there and remember who I am and remember who you are. And then I can do my prayers. Then and only then can I do spiritual mind treatment, which is our affirmative prayer for you, because it, I have to know for myself first, before I can know for you that we are perfect, complete and whole. And that is the truth of it. And that is what we all know. And that is our true nature. So that is the through the valley. And last but not least, we are to the field. We are to the field. This field. that Rumi talks about, that Rumi writes about. And you know, Rumi always writes about love. Call God love. Call God whatever you want to call it in principle. Love, light, beauty. Call it whatever you want to call it, but it is love. And so sometimes you can think of Rumi's poems as love poems. You can actually give them away to people as love poems. But what he's really doing, very much like Lauren Daigle, who writes her music and sings her music, as we know, she's singing to her beloved. But her beloved is the infinite one. It's the almighty spirit that she's really singing to. And she's singing to that spirit that is within each one of us, connecting us to each other. And so it is that place of where Rumi talks about where there is no wrongdoing, that we meet one another. And first and foremost, have you met yourself there? Have you ever thought of that? Have you, have you ever, have you ever had that? 
I, we call spirit's voice, we small voice, which I, I tell you why, why is it so that we have to be quiet in order to hear this we small voice. We also have our very loud human voice that does a lot of negative self talk to us, right? That inner critic that we talk about. Have you ever thought that when that inner critic is engaged, that we might go to that field that Rumi talks about just for ourselves, just to remember who we are, remember the power that, that we have. And I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about the potions, the witches' potions. I'm not talking about the spells we can put on. I'm talking about the truth with the capital T that we know for sure. We all know that there's one truth and that there's one spirit and that that spirit is oneness and power and perfection. And that is who we are. That is our true nature. That never changes. That never changes. It is who the, it is our soul identity. It is who we can, it's on our driver's license. If we were driving through life, it is our identity. It's our birth date. It's everything. We are that that is. And so if we stay in the field of right, wrong duality, we will never experience the true freedom and love of the universe. You understand that? This is an important lesson today. We must let go of old stories, beliefs, hurts, fears, and angers. Does anyone have an old story, a belief, a hurt, a fear, an anger right here and right now that we want to just kind of leave in the valley of the shadow of death? Who's with me? Just drop it. Let it go. I feel like I should be in costume for Frozen. Let it go. Let it go. We do not do this by wrestling with them, by wrestling with the stories, by wrestling with the beliefs, by wrestling with the hurts, by wrestling with the fears and anger. We do this how? By looking up. Sometimes, if you don't have time during the day, this is a Reverend Dr. Kathy Ann Lewis practice. She teaches looking up. Reverend Dr. David Bruner's whole theme for this year is looking up. Because if we don't have time to do anything else but to look up, it's really hard when you're looking up to see to that level of condition, situation, and circumstance. Get used to that. Get used to that physical, physical, immediate spiritual practice of looking up. And right now I'm looking up and seeing a spider. Um, sorry. <laughs> Spend each day when you have an area of concern, personal or global. Who gets, sometimes if you have nothing bothering you, all you have to do is turn the television on. And you can just find something. If you're, if you're missing something in your own life that's bothering you, just turn, the, turn on what, whatever news station you listen to. That'll help. And we're not talking about having your television bracketed a little upward. We're not talking about that upward. We're talking about beyond the field, beyond wrongdoing. It's beyond the television level height. It's, it's beyond that. It's look, look higher. And sit with your eyes upward and invite spirit to shed light. This, this is, this is the, this is the way it is. And last, listen without analyzing to the wisdom that might seem from beyond the veil, <laughs> yet is living within us always. Let us pray. I was just about to go into a witch's voice. I have to have a little chat with spirit because spirit is a little spirited this morning. 
But I know for a fact that God is joy, that today is a day to celebrate joy. Today is also a day to celebrate our loved ones. Today is a day to make that special food, to release old stories of death and dying, and to embrace all of life. There is no fear in God. God is good. God is infinite, cannot be opposed if it's infinite, so it can't be dual. It can't be opposed by any evil dual force. So God is good. So when we are looking up, we are looking up into good, our good, and collapsing into form the experience in this life of that good. This is how it is. This is how it works. And I know when I speak my word, when I, have, when I speak my word from that field, that, that field that Rumi writes about, when I speak my word, I'm always in that field. I can't speak my word until I get there. I cannot speak my word until I get to the field. So I have to sometimes go through the valley of the shadow of death with my thoughts and my fears and lay it at the feet of God. Lay it down before I step into the field that is so amazing where it, it, and where everything is created from. All good is created in that field. And so I am in that field powerful. I, 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 when I speak my word, it is done in mind. The loss grabs that up and runs with it. So I speak my word here right now for families celebrating their loved ones who have made their transition and have come back to celebrate. I speak my word for everyone in this community to know that this place, the vision for the Sacramento Center for Spiritual Living came about in that field. We can't write visions from anywhere else other than that field. We can't be in the valley of the shadow of death and write a vision that is like the banks of the river holding us, moving us forward. No, we must go step into that place where all of us were correlated to begin with. Before time and space, we were unity. We are brothers and sisters. We're beloveds to each other. We don't we, in that field, when we meet each other there, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a leader of nations. I don't care if, if you're our so-called enemy. In that field, we love thy neighbor. There, are, there is no se separation from our neighbor. We love our neighbor there. So I know today a sacred celebration if not only the expansion of the Sacramento Center for Spiritual Living, and oh, do we have good news about that. We have some God news about that. We have a manifestation from our vision for all of us to enjoy today. Because when we are in that field that Rumi writes about, all is well. And I know that for the world, I know that for all children, for all families, for all animals, for all sentient beings, for, for every tree, every mineral. I am so grateful to know this truth and to stand in that field with all of us. That is where I live and breathe and have my being. And I know this for us all. So I release my word with such thanksgiving because the prayer is done. I, I'm there. And I, I allow the law to show it to the world. And please agree with me by saying in every language, shalom, hallelujah, amen. All is well, and so it is. Happy Halloween, Dio de los Muertos. God bless. <laughs>
from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord the Lord which made heaven and earth he said to be moved the Lord which keep thee he will not slumber or sleep for Good morning, and I'm the ghost of opportunity, and we are offering uh, three opportunities to donate to your favorite charity, Sacramento CSL, and one way is through PayPal or Square, and you use our website, sacramentocsl.org, or mail a personal check to um, our uh, PO box there shown on your screen. And we have Smile on Amazon. Please go there and put us down as your favorite charity. And we appreciate that. And thank you, YouTube audience, for your donations. And happy Halloween. <clears throat> and please remain uh, muted as we say our abundance affirmation together. Abiding by the law of circulation and in heartfelt gratitude, I affirm that I live in a creative and abundant universe that continuously flows in, through, and out as me, expressing as the ever-expanding infinite good. And so it is. And if you please stay with us, and we do have two ways for prayer requests. One is uh, during fellowship, we offer a five-minute opportunity for you uh, and us to give prayer and also online prayer requests to our website, saccsl.org. We love to pray because we know it works. Thank you. And here's the latest news by, by Ruth Hall, AKA Elton John, president of the board of trustees. Yay! Uh, thank you so much. 
Uh, you know, Elton uh, has a little bit of an accent, but don't be surprised if he turns into a Scottishman from time to time. Don't know why that happens. Anyway, here is the exciting new news that we need to share with you. Sacramento Center for Spiritual Living has a new home. We are going to be meeting at the Citrus Heights Community Center. We have a beautiful room that we are going to be using. This is going to be our new home for at least the next year, starting with the first and fifth Sundays of every month, starting in January. Put it on your calendar. It'll be easy to remember because it'll be the first and the fifth Sundays of every month. We're going to start out that way, having our in person and on Zoom. Sacred Sunday Services at the Community Center. Absolutely beautiful place, plenty of parking, lots of room, wonderful location. Please put that on your calendar. You will just love it. But there's more. You know, one of the things that our outreach community is doing is gathering some warm winter things for the heart of of uh, Citrus Heights, and they are collecting all these things that you see here and more. Um, so we're gonna be doing some collecting for that. And there's more. So the first thing you need to know is that we're going to be meeting at the Citrus Heights Community Center on December 4th from 2.30 to 4.30. It's going to be our winter celebration. You'll get to take a look at the new location where we'll be meeting. You'll be able to ex exchange cookies. We'll have a cookie exchange. We're probably also going to have an auction. We'll have a, a silent auction where we might have some wonderful gifts that you can, you can um, bid on. And we're also gonna be collecting those wonderful warm things for Heart of Citrus Heights. So put that on your calendar as well. And there's more. So even though we're gonna start in January, whoops, even though we're gonna start in January with the, um, with the, our Sacred Sunday services being on the first and the fifth, our very first time we're gonna be able to go in and have a Sunday service is on December 19th, let me see, does that say that on here? No, on December 19th, we're going to have our candle lighting ceremony. That's on a Sunday. We'll have our candle lighting ceremony at the Citrus Heights Community Center at our regular time from 10.30 to 11.30. So put that on your calendar as well. And as always, go to our website, that's where you'll find out all the details. That's where you'll see the times and the, and the location. All of that will be on our website. And another new news, the Busy Hands Warm Hearts is going to be changing their times for the next couple months at least because of the holidays. Instead of the second and fourth Mondays of the month, in November and December, it'll be the first and third Mondays. We'll get a new slide up here for you soon, but just make sure you make that change. And this wonderful group is also making some warm, wonderful things for the donations to Heart of Citrus Heights as well. So lots of new wonderful information. I'm so glad you stayed for this announcement. And Please join us in this wonderful new being of the Sacramento Center for Spiritual Living. Quick, quick note, the first Monday actually is tomorrow. <laughs> so busy yes, fans will be meeting tomorrow. Any classes coming up? Patricia, gotta uh, stop mute. Yes, we'll learn, learn more about classes next week. We'll be announcing them. But for right now, let us stay on mute and join into our affirmation 
And this is a gift that we give you to take with you this coming week. You can say it every day, just hold it in your heart. But I step beyond my limiting ideas and into freedom. And now join with me in this moment. We are in the field beyond right and wrong. We are in the field of infinite possibility. We are in that field of absolute love. And my help does come from the Lord. It comes from the law that spirit moves through the law that always says yes. I am always accompanied on all journeys with the spirit, with the law, as me, as my surroundings. And I give great thanks that as I move through this week, that I have the spirit of love and the power of the law with me always, working for me, to love me, to support me, and to move me even further into the discovery of the true self and into joy. And so it is. So stay with us for the fellowship after our closing song. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. so great.